Greeks developed three architectural styles in building their temples. The styles were Doric order, Ionic order, and Corinthian order. The Doric order is sturdy and formal with a, with a plain capital. The Ionic order is thinner and more elegant. Its capital is decorated with a scroll-like design. The Corinthian order's capital is very elaborate and decorated with acanthus leaves, temples, and public buildings were made of stone. Other less important buildings were made of mud and brick. Roofs were made of terracotta tiles or wood. Typical Greek houses and small rooms arranged in a rectangle plan around an interior courtyard. Others had an interior courtyard with a large rectangular hall that led to a porch. Outside of the courtyard were small rooms for serving storage and cooking. Paintings were an important part of Greek culture. Few, if any, paintings have survived. They were used to enhance the visual aspects of architecture and pottery. They depicted scenes of daily life, portraits, and still life. In the archaic period, the Greeks were inspired by the Egyptians, so their sculptures were stiff like the Egyptians. Sculptures in this period were nude. They had bulging eyes, a square chin, stiff position, and the archaic smile. In the classical period, sculptors experimented more with poses, and the sculptures became more naturalistic. In the um, Hellenistic period, sculptures became more realistic. The sculptors began to sculpt a wild range of subjects like old age, pain, and death. Pottery in ancient Greece was well made and beautifully painted. They were decorated with scenes from everyday life. During the geometric period, pottery was decorated with abstract designs. Gradually, oriental motifs came into fashion. The black figure technique, which had red pot decorated with black figures, became popular. Then the red figure technique, which had a black pot decorated with red figures, became popular. Women in ancient Greece were conservative. They kept their whole body clothed and wore something over their head when they went out. They wore peplos, which could be pinned on one shoulder or sewn up to make a dress. It can also be pulled over the head and worn like a hood. Later, the papillos was replaced by the chiton. It had loose sleeves and was held in place with pins, brooches along the sleeves. Bright colors were popular among women. During the winter, they wore shawls. Sandals were worn outside. The women wore necklaces, bracelets, earrings, and anklets. They grew their hair long and tied it in braids or ponytails. They also pulled it back of their head and held it in place with a net and ribbons. Headbands and other gold hair decorations were worn on special occasions. Women wore eyeliner, face makeup, and often dyed their hair. They wore perfumed oils and tried to keep out of the sun as much as possible because a sand tan was not considered attractive. Men in ancient Greece was the exomus, which was worn, draped over one shoulder, and just covered the knees, or the chiton, which was worn on both shoulders and gathered in folds about the waist and tied with a girdle. In the winter, they wore a hemation, which was a long piece of cloth that, wrap, that was wrapped around the body and then draped over the left shoulder. Like women, they went barefoot and put on leather sandals when going out. Most men had beards and short hair. They only wore signet rings as jewelry. The main food of the ancient Greeks was bread, which they would eat with green vegetables, beans, eggs, and cheese. The common food they ate were beans, goat cheese, bread, fish, olives, vegetables, figs, and fruit. 
They relied on small family-run farms to grow their food. Because Greece is surrounded by the sea, the Greeks ate a lot of fish. The fishers traveled out to sea to catch and sell fish at the marketplace. Meat was expensive, so it was rarely eaten. It was only eaten on special occasions or feast days. Sometimes rich men held banquets called symposiums, which women and children were not allowed to attend. Before democracy was introduced in Athens, each city-state was ruled by a king with a council of rich landowners. Democracy is a type of government in which citizens chose their leaders. A group of citizens called the assembly made the city's important decisions. Any citizen could take part in the meetings and they could vote for their generals. Only adult male citizens had a say in the government. The assemblies met 40 times a year with a council of 500 citizens. Women in ancient Greece had little freedom. They could not leave the home without being accompanied. Women were not allowed to take part in the decisions of the city-states and were excluded from taking part in assemblies. The status of women increased when they had given birth to a boy. After marriage, women were put in charge of running the house and spent most of their time at home. In rich households, Women had slaves and servants to work for them. In smaller households, wives cooked and did the chores themselves. Religion played a major part in Greek life. The ancient Greeks worshipped many different gods and goddesses. They believed that the gods took an interest in the day-to-day -day lives and could influence what happened to them. They also believed that if the gods were pleased, they would help the people and answer their prayers. They offered the gods animal sacrifices, fruits, and gifts. They expected the gods to protect them from illness, look after their crops, and grant them favors in exchange for offerings. They worshipped around a small altar at home and installed temples. Each temple was dedicated to a god or goddess. The Parthenon, which is built on the Acropolis in Athens, was used to worship Athena. Priestesses were important figures because they were viewed as a link between the gods and the people. People also went to oracles for advice. An oracle is a priest or priestess who had special powers. People wrote questions for the gods on lead tablets and the gods replied through the oracles. They carefully worded their predictions so that they'll be right in whatever happened. Death came early in ancient Greece because life was very harsh. Young men often died in battle and young women died in childbirth. The ancient Greeks believed that the dead crossed the river Syx to the underworld. A funeral was very important to them. The body was perfumed with oils and laid out at the home in clean clothes with flowers around the head. A coin was sometimes placed in the mouth to pay the Syx ferryman. The most prized possession of the dead were also placed in the coffin. Family members shaved their heads and wore mourning clothes. The dead were buried because the kingdom of the dead was generally thought to be deep in the earth.